Ready. Begin. Welcome to the Gcast, the only podcast on the internet that has me in it. I'm Ninja. Who are you people? Uh, well, I'm AJ, uh, Beefcoon249 on Instagram. And today we have a special guest, um, Larry Schwartz, the creator of Kappa Mikey and Speed Racer, the next generation for Nickelodeon. Larry, please introduce yourself. I'm Larry Schwartz, the creator of Kappa Mikey and Speed Racer, the next generation for Nickelodeon. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, no problem. Thanks for letting us have you on. Okay. <laughs> So uh, let's just get right on into the interview, I guess. Okay. Larry, what was it like working with Nickelodeon? Well, they were great. I mean, they they gave me the opportunity to make television shows. The the I had had a toy company, and we had made cartoons and things online and uh, animated and live action shows but we had never done anything for TV before. And we had Kappa Mikey that was like in development at that time at MTV, but then um, fell out of development there. And, uh, but we got uh, Adina Pitt, who was the buyer at Nickelodeon, uh, gave us the opportunity to do these two short series uh, called Leader Dog and Tortellini Western. And that was really like our first chance to, to make something. So we made those shorts for them. And uh, when Kappa Mikey became available, uh, she bought it and she kind of like gave, she, she gave me the opportunity to, to do all this. Oh, that's nice. I remember about Kappa Mikey, it would only air on Nicktoons at 2 a.m. with other shows, which are kind of like forgotten. But I think Speed Racer Next Generation had the the most amount of air air, ta- air time because it was aired like it had marathons on Nicktoons all the time. Well, when Kappa Mikey was actually first airing the first two seasons out of it, I think we aired like uh, something like twenty times a week on Nicktoons or something like that, and it was the it was the number one rated show on the network for a while. Uh, by the time Speed Racer got on, I don't think Kappa Mikey was on the air anymore. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't think it was, from what I can recall. It was. I think it was ended already. Uh, I remember Speed Racer Next Generation just coming out by the time the film came out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, like, what and, the Next Generation like created because of the film. So what happened was that uh, Lionsgate had the rights to do the an animated series of uh, Speed Racer, and there was a lot of buzz about the property because uh, the movie was going to come out in like a year, and uh, they went around to different broadcasters, and uh, they pitched the idea of doing an animated series, and we had a really good relationship then with uh, Nick uh, for having done Kappa Mikey and Three Delivery. And uh, they wanted our take on it. So they said that they would be interested in doing it if we were uh, the studio for it. So uh, that's how we got that job. It was different from most of the others. I mean, pretty much like everything that we had done to that and and time and then after that time were shows that we created ourselves and that we owned and this we were hired uh, to make it but we were hired also to the reason why I've created by credit on it is because we were hired to come up with like the whole concept of what like the reboot would be and what that story would be and stuff like that so we wrote them and we produced them okay cool what were like the budgetary things with that because it looks like the show was CGI, I guess. It was. It was. Yeah. Uh, it was like a painted CJ. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was very stylized, especially as like it a was kid different. watching it. It was what? It was different uh, yeah. from the other series on Nicktoons at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's. They wanted it to be in a uh, 3D, but they wanted it still to kind of like have like. Uh, relationship to the original animated series uh which was obviously 2d 
at the time. So they kind of came up with this idea, you know, that they wanted us to do a hybrid of it. And we actually, um, we originally were doing it with the studio overseas and then, uh, there were some problems with that. And that was also the first time we ever worked with like a studio overseas to do it. And then, so we had to kind of like take it back in house and do this like massive project to get everything done in time because they wanted to launch it. Uh, the first season they wanted to launch in time for when the movie came out. So, um, so we did, we ended up doing it all in house and that was like our first, you know, we'd done everything before in Flash and every, and and that was our first kind of stuff with CG in it. Oh, cool. Would that series be considered canon with the original series, or is it, it its own thing? I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh. I have no idea. I mean, I it's it's the original. It's the same, you know, yeah. characters and stuff, and it's it's a it's authorized. So I I don't know. Okay. Um, Scoob, I believe you had some questions about Kappa Mikey. Oh, yeah, I do. Uh, were, were there plans for a third season? Um, I don't think at the time there were. I mean, there's certainly, you know, there's a, a lot more ideas that we... The way we wrote Kappa Mikey was um, we had a writer's room, so we kind of did it very uh, differently than other animated kid shows uh we actually had like in-house writers and we did it kind of like the same way like a sitcom is written or things like that where we had a group of writers in-house and uh at our writers room meetings people would pitch ideas and um then we would all kind of talk through the ideas and we would assign scripts to our in-house writers based on that and um we certainly had a lot more stories to tell. Um, uh, so I guess I would have always have loved to have continued it. And, you know, I still do. Now that I have the stuff back, that's what I'm trying to do with it now. Oh, nice. Yeah, that would be great if it did come back for, like, now how anime has progressed, like with Attack on Titan, all those memes. I think it could fit with Kappa Mikey. There's and, so much stuff now, and there's also so yeah. much, like, you know, with kind of, like, you know, with, like, Netflix and Hulu and things like that, there's also, like, ways for, I think, fans to find things better uh, than when that show kind of first launched. So um, I'm excited about the possibility of bringing it back. I would love to. I'd love to have the original cast back, who I just think are so important for the show that and uh some of the original writers if we could get them a lot of them you know have gone on to really big jobs in um big sitcoms and and shows like that and i'm kind of proud that uh i'm very proud that uh for a lot of them that was their first job on uh on kappa mikey so yeah i would love to do it i love those characters uh and i i love that show and it would be awesome to be able to make, and I'm so like honored that people are still into it. And I think that, you know, I'd love to make something, you know, for, for the people that are still into it. And I'd love to kind of get the stuff back on the air and also get new episodes to expose like a whole new group of people to it. Yeah. Like with the original series, like there's many jokes to like Miyazaki, uh, like Speed Racer, Ranma, like Inuyasha shows like that because those were really the only anime at the time i know we were really nervous actually when we we had to when we, when we were meeting with the the rights holders for speed racer um about getting the speed racer the next generation job and we were showing some of the stuff we made and the the first thing is you know we did the we showed an episode of kappa mikey and right in the beginning is that um is the uh is that fat speed racer looking character that's um that's Mikey's driver when he picked up at the airport uh, in, 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 in the beginning of the season. So, uh, but, you know, they were, they were happy that we gave that, you know, it was an homage to them. And, 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 you know, people were so excited. A lot of the same crew that worked on Kappa Mikey, you know, worked on Speed Racer. And people were so excited because they were all fans of, like, the original series and stuff like that. So for them, it was, like, you know, an amazing thing to be able to, to work on it. 
Yeah, and there was like a debate about whether if Kappa Mikey is actually anime or American cartoon, because apparently apparently some websites categorize it as an anime, uh, but not in like Western animation. Well, it was. I mean, I think at the time there was, you know, and people have opinions about it as to whether anime, you know, is just something that could be made in Japan or it could be made anywhere. And, you know, the thing is that it is that style of animation is made in Japan. It's made in Korea. It's made in France and it's, it's made everywhere. And we, the show Kappa Mikey didn't actually air in Japan. It was a Nickelodeon global acquisition and it aired on every Nickelodeon channel around the world, but it didn't air in Japan. But since we had the beat crusaders, which is a Sony um, Music Japan uh, band that did the theme song. Uh, we actually had a big following in Japan, and when when I would go for for work for other things to visit um, some of the big anime studios and 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 meet directors and and animators, they all knew Kappa Mikey and they would watch Kappa Mikey and you know and they really the fact that they loved it was such a you know honor for me. Yeah, like, um, I thought it was just great. I I loved it a lot because, like, I love the fact that it was just, like, anime, but also American at the same time. And all, like, the little jokes. I remember Nicktoons had these weird bumpers that was, like, it was a guy dressed up in a guano costume, and there would be a guy in a Cosmo costume. And they would just interact with each other, oh, and like they were visiting bumping the into office, stuff, like in the office, like right at Nick's yeah. office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was our. Uh, we made that guano costume, and uh, yeah, they borrowed that from us for some promos and stuff. I would. I are those? Where are the? I I haven't seen those in years. Are they like online somewhere? Well, I haven't seen the promos at all. It might be online, like on YouTube, if someone has archived them, archived. But like, it. It would just air frequently until the channel, when they just changed it fully, like, over the years, they right. they stopped, like, airing those. So did you watch Kappa Mikey when you when you were, like, a kid, when it first aired and stuff? Is that? Oh, yeah. And how, how old were you? How old were you then? I think it was eight. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. yeah. I never I got, got the honor just, to see but, it on air. I was just, I just heard about it by ear because of the stylistic choice of having thick outlines in Japan and everything's thin outlines and I just love that aspect of it. Well, so yeah, so like I came up with the show idea originally um, because, you know, a couple of years before, it took a while to get it on the air, but a few years before uh, because it was actually a meeting at Cartoon Network where they were talking about their different styles of animation and things what that do well for them and that the anime shows were doing well for them and that the... Um, that kind of like thick graphic line, you know, American kind of style, um, the graphic wow. style uh, kind of stuff was was doing well, and I figured, wow, well, it'd be cool to really like do a show that combined both. And yeah, I always assumed. Like, I I yeah, uh, sorry, uh, I always assumed it was inspired by Danny Phantom or Powerful Girls, but the thick outline. Well, yeah, that style definitely. You know, that was kind yeah. of like yeah. the that was kind of like this the kind of like new style of like American cartoons like at that time. And you know, I wanted to do something where I was like combining both of those styles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's like I, oh, sorry, I, I really like just that. It's it like shows the contrast between the how American animation works, where it's like really just all slapsticky so they have to be really simple to animate japanese animation where it was very detailed so it was all just like drama i guess right yeah and i noticed at least possibly one cartoon network joke in the series which is a uh, hi hi puppy yummy yummy because there's like a parody of those two characters yeah in the show. totally totally yeah yeah and with the mtv pilot and I always wondered, did Nickelodeon had have the original pilot like in their archives? Because with Nickelodeon, there's many lost media, like with Blue's Clues, uh, Backyardigans, and like the lost media community has been trying to find all these Nickelodeon lost media, and Viacom doesn't really 
want to associate with floss media at all. Well, so it's kind of like hard I to don't know. find. I know that, you know, it was so the way we like those shows like Blues Clues and everything like that, those are shows that like Viacom owns. Like Cap Mikey yeah. is a show that, that we owned, whether it was gonna be on MTV or whether it then eventually with Nickelodeon. Um, so I don't know the the people who who found it and put it on the air, um, you know, and which I was really happy that people got to see it and everything like that. I don't know where they had gotten that <laughs> copy from. Um, we had had we had it. Oh, maybe actually Sergey sent it. I think I don't know. We had had it, um, and it was all in our archives. From I didn't have access to it because I had, that's when I had sold the company. But um, and then it was released a little bit before I got it back. But then, yeah, then we got it back. But um, yeah, so that that original pilot was something. The way that worked was a little different from the way we ended up doing our deal with Nickelodeon. That was when it was an MTV. It was kind of like a development deal, and um, they had a specific idea of what they wanted, you know, for the show. And and we did too. We kind of gave back notes and things like that. And they really wanted like a real kind of like adult irreverent sensibility, you know, for it. And uh, my friend Dave Mandel, who is now the showrunner for Veep, uh, was the writer uh, of that uh, original pilot, and. Uh, I love it and it's hilarious and it was obviously you know very different in terms of tone and everything like that from what we eventually went for for Nickelodeon show which was you know geared toward six to ten year olds um and um but you know it would have been great to tell that story with MTV and it was certainly great to tell it with Nickelodeon you know it just would have been a different different show yeah like the adult themed is like totally different from like how Nickelodeon had it and well, I was wondering as well, like if you were to reboot the series, if it was if you would make it more adult themed or just make it the same because uh I think I would you know, I'd wanna, I think I'd make it the same. I mean, I think like what's cool about it is that it kind of works, you know, without it being like, you know, way adult. You know, we always saw it as kind of like a sitcom and you know, we kind of try to write it as a sitcom and what always you know worked about it was it worked for like our target audience but it also worked for you know older fans also at that time so uh, you know i i think that we've we've spent you know 52 episodes kind of creating those characters and 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 um telling stories with them and i love those characters and i i don't think that i would want to change them too much you know um yeah that's but good. i think that i think that we could make a um i think that we could make a a, a gr we could continue telling those stories you know without having to kind of like depart too much from that you know but it's it's we also have to try to find um you know we can't just like make them ourselves so it's like we we do have to find like a buyer for them so that's kind of you know what we're going to start trying to do so we'll see you know what they say because we want it to work wherever whatever buyer we end up going with we want it to be able to work on their air and for their viewers and things like that yeah and there's really only one problem with the series was that the dvd sales like well like the dvds in general and the quality of how it's online basically with the dvds there wasn't many dvds released from from Kappa Mikey or by Nickelodeon, we in America we only got like one volume, and I think only in Australia they got two seasons. Yeah. So what happened was we did um, Anchor Bay, which was like a home video company then, um, did a deal with us uh, to release the home video series, and then they ended up only doing in the U.S. I think like the first episode on it, but Anchor Bay. Yeah. Uh, their other Cap Mikey was on in Australia on Nickelodeon, and they ended up releasing, I think, just the first season on home video in Australia. I actually never even saw that home video. I don't. I didn't even. I actually bought one recently on uh, on on eBay, but I haven't gotten it yet because I I forgot about that, and you know, so I, I never even saw it. Um, uh, so I guess yeah, I they were hard to find. Yeah. And because like 
somehow someone in Australia, thank God they did, was upload all the episodes on mine, which is bad, but it was like the only way we could stream it. Well, listen, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a, um, it's kind of like, it puts me in like, kind of like a, you know, uh, an asshole situation because it's like, on one hand, it's like, I love the fact that people have, you know, over the years have taken the time and put it up and that people still watch it. And that's fantastic that people have done that. Um, because, um, that's how people have gotten to watch it, you know, these, all these years. So I'm really happy for that. On the other hand, it's like, you know, it's, it's like a really weird situation because it's like, we want to try to get, we want to make, I would love to be able to make more episodes and tell more stories of it, you know, and then, Part of that would be also selling the episodes that we already have to a broadcaster. But if they're all on, you know, online and people can get them for free, that obviously makes it harder. I mean, obviously, it's a better experience watching it on TV. Yeah. We'll have like a high def version of it and it'll be really cool. But, you know, it puts me in an awkward position because it's like I don't want to tell people like not to do stuff or put stuff on or, you know, do stuff like that. Um, so so uh uh, and we- it's kind of funny because the pirating episode, there's an episode about not pirating. Yeah, 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 <laughs> totally. And we're just watching it on a pirating website. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had that. I think we wrote that. We had a problem then with a uh, uh, a pirating website uh, during the while the show was being broadcast. And uh, I think that was kind of like the inspiration for that. Um, that episode. Um, what's in the exact same episode? There's like a double of Mikey. Uh, I can. God, it doesn't I get explained. I'm, I'm just starting to like look at stuff again, <laughs> like to get into it to try yeah. to you know figure out new stories and stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't remember that. I think I, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> the episode was like there's this double Mikey and he wore sunglasses the whole time. Oh and yeah, he just... yeah, yeah, totally, totally, yeah. You never find out who he is in the series. And it, it was just very random. And I thought, yeah, that would be cool if... It was kind of like in Teen Titans with how they kept stuff unanswered within the series. Yeah, yeah I got to I gotta go back. I got to check, like, you know, when we hopefully, you know, make more stuff, we'll go get some kind of fan questions, things. What are some of the stuff that we left unanswered and maybe we'll kind of tackle some of those again so we could come back i hope so i hope so <laughs> listen it's really good you know it's like it's like a cool thing i mean i'm really happy that people are still interested in it and you know when when broadcasters now make decisions about what they want to buy about things that are you know that have been on the air before or what really goes into the decision is you know how how known the brand is and you know what the fan base is and if they're active and everything like that so i think it's awesome that that people are active yeah. and care about it yeah yeah that's great that it has a small following still i recently just for this podcast i designed uh mikey in teen titan style which i will like post soon oh wait you're, you're gonna upload that send that to me yeah I'll put it on instagram or something like that and, and yeah let me, uh, let me see it uh, I can send it in the script chat now. Uh, I just have to get to Skype. <laughs> All right. Well, so guys, listen. So you remember, So I've got to go to my mother's birthday dinner, which starts at seven thirty. So that's why I wanted to do like a short one, and I've I've got to head out and go for a couple blocks. But uh, do you have one more question or anything that that do you want to ask, or um, should we just wrap it with that? I got one last one. Okay. Is it would it have been possible for Speed Racer the Next Generation to cross over with Kappa Mikey? I don't. I mean, it, we talked about it, and we would have loved to do that. But since it's you know, it wasn't. A, we didn't own the right the rights to use those characters and stuff in in our show and and things like that. We really couldn't do that. Okay. But it, I I would have loved that. I used to love those shows, like when I was a kid and watching, like laugh olympics and things like that where they had like all the different characters for all the different shows like on on one show i thought that was the coolest thing so i would have loved that but um to answer your question no it wasn't possible but it would have been cool if it were (laughs) okay yeah all right 
thanks for being on the show, Larry. It was yeah. loved having you on. Thank you for having me. That's awesome. So, yeah. uh, and send me that picture. Okay. Right. I I'm All about right, to post it on Instagram right now, awesome. but I'll send it to you in DMs okay, bye, first. Okay. Bye. bye. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Okay, so it was, like, nice to have Larry on. Yeah, I feel like I got closure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. And also, we have another person to take his place. Um, Our good friend, Sonny. From Hi, Sunny I'm Sonny. I do all the behind-the-scenes stuff for Gcast. Okay, stop contacting people like what she's supposed to do. Because <laughs> she has anxiety. Shh, don't tell people that. She doesn't have anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> so mean to me. I'm joking, Sonny. I love you too. Okay. I probably have Biff. On, on to the topic. So, Grandma Del Toro signed with DreamWorks Animation for Family Films. I don't know who that is, so good for him. Grandma Del Toro made this film called Pulp Fiction. It's one Biff. Oh, picture. crap. I knew that it's name somehow from. popular, but anyway, he just made a deal with DreamWorks Animation to write, direct, and produce films for them. I seriously hope that there's just one where it's just Samuel Jackson running around, <laughs> pointing a gun at people saying, say what again? Yes! I can watch that. <laughs> I s yeah. How to train your dragon free title rebuild, which is how to train your dragon the head and rolled. Oh, I thought it was gonna be how to get over your father's death. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Me <laughs> uh, no. uh, but um what if Gomo del Toro does how to train dragon three? Oh my god. Do we know who's producing the next film? Uh, or, I don't can look it up right now. Okay, Sonny, you, you can do that. Oh, that was random. <laughs> but, like, it's just Pulp Fiction. It's, like, Pulp Fiction-y, where it's, like, all the events are just all, like, askewed and randomized. So... so it's just, like... It's just, like, the beginning hiccups in, like, a bar with his girlfriend. And then they, like, try to rob, try to rob the restaurant. Then it cuts to um the short guy and the fat kid just like oh. holding a bunch of people at gunpoint in like a room. And I'm very I'm doing very bad because I don't know the names of how to train your dragon kids. It's okay. I don't even I never I seen watched that. How to Train Your Dragon. So How to Train Your Dragon was my favorite book series growing up. I read the entire book series. I, However, was I I tolerate the movie series because they're somewhat true to the book, but they're also not, and it really upsets me because you know me, I'm like books, books. Oh, well, there's a books. reason. The guy who directed the first How to, How to Train Your Dragon, and I think came up with Toothless, is Chris Sanders. Chris Sa Sanders. No, Chris Sanders. Chris Sanders is the person who designed and created Stitch. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, recently Teen Titans Go slammed Ryan Reynolds. Sonny Ford did it wrong, wrong but anyway. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> I tried my best to make it for us. <laughs> so basically, um, Teen Titans Go recently posted a pic, uh, Jeff, uh, apparently a clip from the film of Green Lantern saying, We did a film once, we don't talk about it. And then the description said this Hey, Ryan Reynolds, just know before you were on Mar Marvel, you were with us. Oh, oh no, YouTube drama. Oh, I love Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds is alright. He's, he's, he's not the best comedic actor out there, but he's definitely not the worst. Yeah, he's hilarious. He can be, but other times he can just be kind of annoying. Eh, I can he can. That. He's good as a snarky asshole. 
I mean, Deadpool is my favorite movie he's in. I, 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 like, when it comes to film season, I don't really like it that much. Except Deadpool, like... I, I don't know, they just never interested me. Deadpool is like pretty solid, though. I yeah, like R. I. P. D. Oh, I never seen that film. I heard it got a sequel, I think. No, it didn't. It's, uh, it's all standalone. But I actually quite enjoyed that film. It was... It, it had zombies or something, and it was cool. Oh, we will also discuss Teen Titans Season 6. Okay. Isn't happening. Uh, isn't... Before you fans get mad, that's Ninja over here. <laughs> Why? It's Ninja. not happening. Non-believers like Ninja. Okay. So the producer of Teen Titans said that he can almost guarantee a season six. Almost guarantee. He used both of those words. But not any words like it could happen, possibly. He used almost guarantee. guarantee. It could happen. <laughs> he isn't guaranteeing it. He's almost guaranteeing it. Guarantee means it could happen. But he's almost guaranteeing it. Almost. Okay, here's another thing. Gray si Greg Sipes, even though he does the voice of Beast Boy and doesn't work with writing or whatever, he writing. confirmed season six. But here. like, okay, AJ, my main problem with that is the fact that there's no corporate corporations even saying that it's happening. There's no annou official announcement. So until it's official, it's not happening. <laughs> I know. I mean, I knew about Finding Dory since I was like eight. <laughs> Scoob, AJ, listen. What you think of as Finding Dory was just the Pixar CGI animation studio making a threat to Pixar saying that they were going to make Finding Dory anyway. What? <laughs> I'm as lost so, as you are. So basically, back in at some point in time back after Toy Story 2 wherever it was like wasn't directed direct to DVD or whatever was happening there Disney's animation department like was just running out of steam and Pixar was leaving Disney because they didn't like how Disney was treating them with Toy Story 2 so this is wrong this is totally wrong listen I'm going off of what I know off the top of my head would you like to explain it better Okay, so when when Disney made a deal with Pixar, Disney didn't own Pixar by then. They had a deal, and uh, Toy Story 2, Monsters, Inc. were like the last films in that deal, and Disney had signed another deal to make Toy Story 3, which was going to be made by Pixar and by another film company. I think called Studio 3. I forgot the name. But yeah. it was going to be a darker darker take on it, where Buzz Lightyear gets sent back to his manufacturing company, and you just see all of the buzzes. And yeah, it, it was interesting, the concept art and everything, but it was going to be released, I think, in 2007. But in 2006, Disney made its move to buy Pixar fully after Incredibles. Yes, but a part of that thing, there was... I know for a fact that there was a threat happening. Where Isn't Studio a threat? Yeah, Studio 3 made like some sort of thing where they're just like, okay, we'll just go ahead and make um, Toy Story 3, Finding Dory, or Finding Nemo 2, Monsters, Inc. 2, and some some fourth movie. Okay, the only films that were planned with Studio 3 was Monsters, Inc. 2 and Toy Story 3. Finding Nemo didn't get confirmed you have a sequel or anything thought of till 2010 2012 so because Ellen DeGeneres is the one who confirmed Finding Dory on her show in 2012 she had a countdown to 2016 <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres fish <laughs> so, oh, did you say Ellen DeGeneres fish <laughs> yeah <laughs> no one was happier about Finding Dory than Ellen yeah. I had a friend who was um, going to be one of the like extra voices 
on Finding Dory. Unfortunately, she never got into the movie, but she still did it. Nice. Uh, oh, I don't like Finding that. Dory. It was good. It it's was just cute. Finding Nemo, but worse. It, I mean, it wasn't quite Finding Nemo, and I appreciate the effort, or well, Ellen's effort, because that was just mostly Ellen. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I know for a fact that there was a lot of, like, work that it went into it because it's Pixar. But, like, the problem with Pixar is because they've been making hit after hit for so long. Whenever you just have, like, a movie that doesn't strike the right chord, it really just doesn't, it just doesn't, like, sit, sit well with me. Because I'm used to Pixar movies being this awesome thing. Yeah, well, you see, Pixar sequels started to fail with Toy Story 3. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yes, then got Cars 2. Oh, God. Then Monsters University. And then Finding one, Dory. Monsters University is a guilty pleasure for me just because I love the monster designs. It's a cute movie. I, yeah. I, I prefer Finding Dory, to be honest. But like with I, most I feel things, like it had more of a story. Yeah. It it was it was cute. I like like the like how is it like a prequel type thing. Yeah, but comparing it to like Wally or Incredibles or Toy Story, it just compared to those, it's just a lackluster movie. Which is, uh, I I know it shouldn't be comparing it. But, like, I kind of have to because it's made by the same studio. And it's good. Your logic is great. Okay. I know that they can make good movies. I've seen them make good movies recently. They can. They just kind of suck at it with sequels. I mean, yeah. Toy Story 2. Toy Story the, 2 was, one, like, their like only the real solid sequel. And I'm really hoping Incredibles 2 is also as solid. Yeah, so do I. But then Toy Story 1, IMO. <laughs> I have more nostalgia hate for Toy Story 2, because I had a, I had a DVD of Toy Story 2, and it never worked, so I always just hated that movie because I could never watch it. Uh, happened to me, but you shouldn't hate the movie. You should be... DVD, I had on VHS. Because I'm... Same. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't hate it because of that. It's just like I have, like... Anytime I think of it, I just think of that tiny bit of salt I still carry with me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, Toy Story, actually, I just think meh. What did you say? I, I find Toy Story 3 meh. I don't consider it a real goodbye to Toy Story. Uh... And people do, because it's just like, well, you see the toy saying goodbye to Andy. Andy is legit a supporting character and is not really big in the films. He's just big on the toys. And yeah, it's centered on them about talking about Andy and all, but Andy is just like, he's not a main character or anything. So it never really like hit, hit me or anything about, like it never hit me with sadness, to be honest, yeah. because it just wasn't that big of a character to me. And with, the toys, they have a big impact to me than Andy did. So I feel if they made a perfect ending with the toys like saying goodbye and closing off, that would be great to me as a closure. And I just felt that Toy Story 3 wasn't it. Yeah. I just felt like it was a closure to growing up. Yeah, and I like just see moving that too. on from your childhood. I don't think it really was about. Well, it was about the toys, but it just felt like more of this is your childhood, and you need to grow up, and you need to like kind of accept and move on. It just felt like that. To I, me. I I just wish it had like a better way to get them to the daycare rather than the toys just like not trusting Andy for no reason. Yeah. Well, like, they say no, Andy. They know he wouldn't throw them away, and and like I can understand, like yeah, maybe 
they've been deserting him, but they don't trust Woody either? Oh, uh, Woody's been a leader, and with Toy Story 3, it just bothered me. I, I don't know. It's just like, with Toy Story 1 and Toy Story 2, it has like that feel to it. Like that nostalgic feel, but also with the story and writing, it, it just feels special to me. Then with Toy Story 3, I just find meh. Like, it's like, I don't even have the want to watch it at all. But I would watch the first two and like get like like it as much each time I watch it. But with the third one, I just don't feel the same. Yeah. Well, is this the end of the podcast? Oh, the the guy who played Mini Me died. Um, well, is <laughs> the end of the podcast? Crap! What's with you laughing? We're just gonna end on a death now. Not only a death to our childhood, but a death. Is this the end of the podcast? Yes. My name's Ninja. Who are you people? I'm Sunny. I, oh, I'm AJ. And, and it was Larry. Oh, you would you like to do the goodbye scoop? <laughs> I was gonna say advertise. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Read five years later by Colonel the Artist. Chapter six. We don't know when it will come out, but let's hope for April twenty eighth. Anyway, follow me on Instagram, Dave Coon two four nine, and Devin R H of R. And make sure to join Kira on the Discord link below. Oh. And follow Larry Schwartz on Instagram, Zoom Schwartz, uh, the yep. creator of Captain Mikey. So, thanks again for listening to Gcast, all, all of you beautiful people. I'm just going to steal quite literally every single catchphrase from every YouTuber and make it my own then. So, thank again, thanks. I'm really happy that the last episode grew as much as it did. Let's hope we can just keep on growing. Special thanks for Larry Schwartz again. I don't know why he joined, but he didn't. That was... That's that was of, great. Thank you, Larry. It's one of my biggest <laughs> achievements of my life. So, thanks for Larry to joining the G-Cast. So, remember, games. keep it spherical. <laughs>